everyone, Kyle Erickson here. The 16 inch MacBook Pro has been a huge part of my everyday workflow in 2022 so far. Uh, when I was picking out the model of MacBook Pro that I wanted, my immediate reaction was to go for the 16 inch screen, but bigger is better. But now that I've been using this daily, my circumstances have changed a little bit, and I'm not so sure that that was the right choice. I'm using this MacBook in a variety of different ways and in different places, and I feel like I have a pretty good gauge on what I like about this machine and what my pain points are with it and why it may have made sense to pick up another laptop instead of choosing the 16 inch model. When I first got this, I figured that I'd be spending most of my time at home. And if you're not lugging this around with you, the size isn't something you really need to think about. Uh, I wasn't until I actually traveled with this laptop and that's where I really felt the pain of its size. Normally I'm working from home and this machine doesn't really move other than from one room to another now and then. But when I started traveling a little bit with this, where I had this in my carry-on, going through airports with this strapped onto my back, I really did feel the discomfort of lugging this around with me. It is a bit clunky just due to how big it is. It weighs in at 4.7 pounds, which I know doesn't seem like a huge increase over some of the smaller MacBooks. Uh, the 14 inch Pro weighs 3.5 pounds and the 13 inch M1 Air weighs in at 2.8. But when you're carrying it around all day on your back, along with a bunch of other stuff, it does make a big difference. And those smaller MacBooks are a lot more portable with a lot smaller form factor as well. If I was traveling a lot more and if that was something that I was doing regularly, I probably would have grabbed the 14 inch version for sure. But if you do just have this at home most of the time and you're not packing this around for too long, the 16 inch is probably still your best bet. I have heard of the 14 inch having some issues with heat on the super spec'd out versions, which I've never had any issues with on the 16 inch version. Also the notch on the display on the 16 inch model seems a bit less intrusive than on the 14 because you do have more screen real estate and it is taking up less of that menu bar area. But either way, I don't find that I really ever noticed the notch sitting in there, at least a lot less than I had anticipated. And speaking of the screen, this is still one of the things that I'm most impressed with on this machine. It does have the mini LED XDR display and the contrast and the brightness are fantastic. Uh, better than any Mac that I've used. It's great if you're doing any kind of content creation, whether that be editing photos or videos, but also if you're working in very bright areas. Usually when I start my day on this, the sun is shining directly through the window onto my desk. And that's where I find that cranking up the brightness really helps, especially if you're on calls or if you're reading or watching something. Uh, that brightness level is a huge improvement over my external monitors. And I was actually so impressed with this screen that it heavily influenced my latest TV purchase. I was looking at OLED TVs and I was a little bit worried about burn-in and all that good stuff. And this screen really sold me on mini LED technology. Uh, if you want to check out the video Video that I did on the TV that I bought. Uh, I did that a few weeks ago, but just coming back to this display, you also get the same benefits on the 14 inch model as well. But with it being the same panel, it's just a little bit smaller. My screen time on this laptop is probably more than it should be. Uh, I use this for about nine hours a day and I usually have loads of browser tabs open. Uh, I'm on video calls all day, but I have also used this for things like video editing and content creation and a touch of software development as well. So super versatile for most use cases. I would say if you're just using your laptop for things like browsing the web or editing documents, taking calls, that kind of thing, I'm not sure it would really make sense to get the 16 inch. I just don't think the extra two inches for doing things like that really has any benefit. Uh, but if you are doing anything creative or using apps that have a big bulky UI, uh, this is a lot more functional. And just a few notes on the creative aspect as well. Uh, this is geared towards creative professionals. So having an SD card reader is really handy. And with it being a UHS-2 reader, it does transfer files relatively quick as well. Uh, the 16 inch model also does have amazing sound, which I have mentioned in another video. Uh, for a laptop, I don't think I've heard anything better 
and the webcam, which is also the same in both the 14 and 16 inch models, is also better than any previous MacBook model that I've seen. I know it's a pretty small thing, but being on video calls a lot through the day, it's something that I notice and that other people on the other end notice as well. So definitely a nice built-in webcam that's a little bit less potato-esque. Diving into the specs a little bit, the Model I have here has the M1 Pro chip with the base setup up of a 512 gig SSD and 16 gigs of RAM. So this does not have the M1 Max. And I can speak as to why I don't think in most cases you necessarily need to go out and jump and grab an M1 Max. Uh, first of all, these machines are quite expensive. So the immediate impact before you even get this thing out of the box is on your wallet. But beyond that, I think that people have got caught up way too much in this M1 performance craze. I asked myself, do I actually need an M1 Max? Uh, looking at what I use this for predominantly, the answer was no. Uh, to be honest, I still do most of my creative work on an M1 Mac Mini, and I've never had any issues with that machine. The M1 Pro has amazing render times if you're working with video and everything runs buttery smooth. I've never felt any lag. It's definitely the snappiest machine that I've owned. I can have way too many browser tabs open than I should and occasionally I'll hear the faintest fan noise, but it's so quiet that you almost have to be listening for it. Having said that, I still love my Mac Mini setup and when I'm doing anything on that machine, 99% of the time I don't notice any difference in performance versus the M1 Pro. When I'm rendering out YouTube videos, sure, it's way faster on the M1 Pro, but I'm never just sitting there waiting for it. It doesn't take very long to begin with and I'm usually just doing something else for a few minutes while that's going on. I also don't edit a lot of crazy resource heavy footage. What I edit is usually just 10 bit H265 4K video that runs just fine on the regular M1. Uh, I don't have too many places with stacking clips or anything like that. So for me, because of those reasons, the M1 Pro is just fine. Maybe if you're editing 6K or ProRes video that has more power hungry needs, or you're doing 3D work or something similar, then sure, maybe it does make sense to grab the M1 Max. But just know that in order to utilize that power, you will have to count on software manufacturers to build things that take advantage of it. This is still an issue that some manufacturers are trying to figure out. So just because you buy the latest and greatest chipset, it doesn't mean that it will live up to its full potential, at least not right now while these companies are trying to catch up to the advancements in the hardware. You may also be future-proofing yourself, wanting a machine that will meet your needs both now and five years from now, which is totally fine. But just remember that Apple products do hold their value really well. So if you do decide to sell your machine a year or two from now, you'll probably still make out okay. Uh, anyway, that's my little rant about Apple chips. Uh, long story short, the M1 Pro chip is super powerful and I personally haven't felt the need to own an M1 Max. Uh, there's a lot of power here and working on this all day, it doesn't skip a beat. Part of working on this all day is directly related to the battery life, which I've been really impressed with. Uh, with the brightness cranked up all the way, as I mentioned earlier, it will obviously drain things a little quicker and that can also be dependent on what you're doing. Apple says the battery life is good for around 14 hours or so, but I found that number to be closer to around nine hours with how I use a laptop, which is still great. Uh, I'm able to work on this all day on a single charge. One of the biggest things that I notice, uh, the MagSafe charger also charges the machine super fast as well. So even when you do have to charge your MacBook, it only takes around half an hour to charge 50% of your battery. Uh, just one thing to note here, the 16 inch model does come with a 140 watt charger out of the gate, where the 14 inch comes with a 96 watt charger. So if you do want that extra quick charge speed on the 14 inch, you will have to buy that 140 watt charger separately. And as far as that MagSafe connector goes, it seemed really neat when I first got it, like, oh cool, they brought it back, uh, kind of nostalgic, I guess, but Honestly, charging through MagSafe or USB-C doesn't really make a difference for me. I do worry a little bit about that MagSafe charging cable over time. 
Uh, if this thing breaks, you obviously have to buy a new cable, and it's likely that it's going to have to be a Apple MagSafe cable, not like a USB-C cable where I can just go out and grab another one for 10 to 15 bucks. Uh, in any case, that is pretty minor. All things considered, I know that there might be a little bit of a negative sentiment here, but I am really happy with the 16-inch MacBook Pro. I just think that it is important to note these things just to help anyone else out that might be shopping for a new machine and maybe is a little bit undecided or unsure of themselves. Uh, this is not a small purchase, so I think these critiques are warranted. I'd say if you're at all mobile with this, stick with a 14 inch and don't feel like you have to go out and spec these machines out if you're not gonna be doing crazy resource heavy tasks. I hope this helped you in some form or another, but if there is anything that you want to know specifically about this machine that I can help answer, let me know in the comments below. Uh, also, let me know if you would like to see something specific show up on this channel. Uh, gently caress that like button if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe if you love me with all your heart. Uh, thank you for taking this journey with me, and I will see you in the next video.